interesting thought experiment going on, friends. And I'm going to talk about hex and staking here, but I want you to learn this lesson for many other things. Not only does it apply to Zen, but just everything else in crypto and life as well. You see, there's demand and supply side. We know that demand is I want it. I psychologically want it. I need this thing. That's what marketing tries to do. It tries to stimulate demand from people like, yes, you want this. It's going to make you sexy, cool, straight in your back. Your slippers are so fluffy. But you got to think about this. Okay. In crypto, what's the demand? Well, it's changing so fast. There's cycle one narratives. They are cycle one. It's age. Okay. See, friends, you don't have to worry about donuts having product market fit, do you? Donuts are always going to be tasty, aren't they? Right? Because they're just pumped with sugar. Okay. But in crypto, when it comes to demand, you remember, because everyone's trying to sell you stuff. Remember, everyone's trying to sell you stuff. People in Bitcoin trying to sell you to store a value. People in Ethereum trying to sell you that it's also a store of value and uses gas fee and collateral and smart contract platform. People are everywhere, friends. XRP, we're selling you this a standard. We're selling you a narrative. They're selling you a narrative to come and join the community. Right now, all of them, they're all great. I love them all. I just want to tell you something before I play for you some nice, gentle angel music. Okay. Stay with me. This experiment, it's going to hit the nail on the head. If there is a table with broccoli on one plate and a donut on the other plate, a nice chocolate sprinkled donut, some say that's what you are, okay? And you have a 12-year-old kid in the middle, right? What do you think they're going to choose? They're going to go for the donut every time. Now, here's the thing. One out of 10 kids are going to be like 4,000 IQ Vitalik geniuses and go, hey, I don't want the donut. I think that's actually pretty bad. I want the broccoli because I want to go healthy and strong. Good for you, little Timmy. You are like the 5 10%. Okay, 90% straight for the donut every time. Bang, 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 bang. Now, here's the thing. Morally, little Timmy should choose the broccoli. Now, I'm going to tell you something, okay? If you need to make money and you have bills to pay and you have a home loan mortgage and electricity and you got to put food on your table and you could only make one thing, you could deploy a broccoli on little Timmy's plate or deploy a donut, what are you going to do to make money? Okay, yes, of course, 95% straight away, you're going to say the donut. Okay, 5% are probably morally right. Like, you know what? I've got enough money in my life. I don't really need to deploy the donut. I'm going to be the person who stands the last ground and deploys the broccoli. I'm going to supply little Timmy with the broccoli. Well, good luck to you. All the money goes to the donut. All right, now here's the thing. What if you're poor? If you're poor, you go, well, yeah, morally, I want everything to be paying off for the broccoli, but I'm just going to have to supply the donut. I'm going to have to supply the donut, man. I need to get fed. This all applies to crypto. In crypto, there are cycle one narratives, okay? Cycle one narratives, friends. If you're, if you're going to make a coin and people make coins, they can either make artificial intelligence, new meme coin, decentralized, um, sorry, decentralized penis, D-pin, decentralized science, De DESI. You have restaking. There's probably other ones as well coming up later, Okay. They can do that or they can go, hey, let me go make like a tweaked, better DeFi altcoin that might help the money, help them, help the world. All right. But here's a problem. The problem is you can't engineer and code your way to get more value in your DeFi stuff if the product market fit is always in the donut. And this cycle's donuts is exactly what I just told you. It's AI and all of these things. Okay. Now, this interesting, friends, I want to show you something. So shout out to Johnny. Now, Johnny has been... He's part of Com. There's, you see him it tagged around on, on Twitter, Com. For Johnny, I'm not ignoring you, bro. I just get literally, I got like 4,000 messages. I don't read, I can't read my DMs, friends. I just can't. There's, I love you all. Every, I know you, oh, you, you, you throw so much love and stories and just, there's so much, man. I try to help everyone. I can't. I can't even look at them, okay? So I'm not ignoring everyone, okay? But here's the thing. The whole proposition of Com as a, like it's an expansion of Hex, because it's interesting, okay? Now, it's you get a coupon. So if you stake, basically you get paid to stake. All right? You get paid to stake. Now, everyone thought this was bullish straight away. First time I heard it, I go, this is the most bearish thing I've ever heard in my life, okay? Most bearish thing I've ever heard in my life. Do you remember little Timmy with the broccoli and the donut? Friends, if, if you have to pay little Timmy to eat the broccoli... What does that say about what broccoli tastes like compared to donuts? Tastes like poop. You know broccoli tastes like poop. You're not eating broccoli for the for the taste. Okay? You're eating broccoli 
for the nutrients. That's good for you, okay? But in the real world, how much money do you have to pay all the kids to eat broccoli? You don't have that much money. You know they're going to keep cheating the donut every single time. Bang, 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 bang. You know everyone's going to supply. That's it. Just this, it tastes better. Just objectively tastes better because it's got sugar in there. Your body hunts it, right? You get addicted to it. So it's the same thing when it comes to here. Now, obviously, I've used this analogy. I know because a lot of people will scoff at the idea of they say, hey, are you implying that staking hex long term, which could be like super risky? Are you implying after all the recent events, recent events that that's actually like eating broccoli? I'm not implying anything. I'm just telling you in the best case it is. So just use the best case, okay? So in a nutshell, if you have to pay somebody to use your coin or to do something with your coin, that means your coin is fading away its relevance, its product market fit. It's fading it away. It's bearish. It's bearish, okay, if you have to do that because you have to pay people to do that. So that's the thing, friends. They, it has to sell itself. Now, here's a once upon a time, friends. So I have it here. Have it here. Okay, harsh truth. If you need to pay people to stake hex, that's extremely bearish, man. Now, I'm not saying not do it. Keep doing it. Try, try these financial experiments. It's a cool idea. It's like, you know what? We want to change people's lives. Let's get them to do a stake. Well, guess what? You know, back when hex actually went up back then, friends, you didn't need to pay people to stake at all. In fact, Richard thought of this already. You think Richard didn't think of this, this idea? Of course he thought of this idea. You can actually look at the chart, put on a log chart. Yes, at the start, Hex sold itself, right? It went up. It actually went up. Yay. Okay, but here's the thing. Okay, here's Hex adopts an amplifier. This is the real chart. And then you go up and then it all comes back down, doesn't it? It just reverses all the way back down. So pretty much just comes back down. So why well, you got the dilution effect, you have all these. But what was going on here? Why did it actually go up? Of course, you have the narratives and all these pulse chain sacrifice. But the truth is, friends, remember we spoke about these, the, these narratives of product market fit. Back then in 2020 and 2021, Hex was new. Richard, true visionary, he could see the narrative of that cycle. He believed in DeFi. He could see it coming. He made Hex to encompass that. So Hex was one of the, one, I think it was the best performing DeFi altcoin. It was the best performer. Now it's the worst, right? Sucks. Even worse than like Luna pretty much at these prices now. Very, very sad because Luna got an airdrop for these, okay? Oh, man, that's nasty. So best performer, the worst performer, right? And that's not store of value, friends. That's leverage. You understand that? Just to let you know that. So also, I know Johnny got upset because when I say, hey, man, Johnny keeps saying that, Sami, you keep saying that Hex is in the store of value, man. Like, stop trying to throw jabs. Like, Habib, Habib, let's play, for, let's play some Habib music for Johnny. All right, let's play some nice Habibi. Johnny, let's have a let's have a conversation, brother. Let's have an honest conversation, okay? Any any chart that does this, bro, in a bear market, okay, that drops minus ninety nine point five percent, okay, it's not me talking, okay. I don't make my opinions here to anybody. All right, I don't make my opinions, friends. I see stuff. And then I'm like, hey, do you see exist, guys? I've been here 18 hours a day. I'm seeing this. You see, oh, you guys are depressed. Okay, up only. Oh, you guys saying we're going to go up forever. Okay, down only. Oh, you're in denial. That means there's more blood to come. Do you see that? You start to pick these things out, right? Now, as I'm saying, something that goes up that much in a bull market and drops freaking minus 99.5%, which is pretty much, man, you basically lost all your money. That's what, if someone saw, saw that on a chart, hey, you didn't lose all your money, you only lost 99.5%. Like, let's get real about that. People would say, okay, you're leverage. You're leverage, okay? You are you are leverage. You're not a store of value. You're not the base collateral. You're leverage on the ecosystem, okay? So that's pretty much what it is. So the whole premise of these is, okay, you know, we can give someone a coupon to stake long-term, to incentivize them. Like, yes, we want you to do 555 stakes, you know, there's a minimum or whatever it is. Yes, let's give you money to do that and change your life. What happens when the money runs out? What happens when the money runs out? What happens when you are now paying little Timmy at the table 800 bucks to eat a piece of broccoli when the piece of donut is like 20 cents? And little Timmy will find 20 cents to go pay that, buy, buy that donut. You know what I mean? That's pretty much it. So, friends, donuts are so tasty that the little kid, right, you give, hey, you can have the broccoli for free, but if you give me two bucks, you can have the donut. What's the kid going to do? 
give me the donut, give me the donut. That's what they're doing right now in the marketplace, okay? That's pretty much it. So look, it, I don't care if that upsets anyone. I, really, I don't give a shit, okay? I didn't make it to where I made it by looking at everyone out there and going, oh, well, okay, let me hold 100% of my portfolio with you. Because friends, I don't know if you guys realize we're in a Pokemon bucket hat, but I speak to everyone out there, okay? I am like international, global friendship, the friendship cult friends, every city. We even have Norway in there. We even have China. It's people from Tibet. There's people buried in the, underneath the freaking Atlantic Ocean, friends. Probably people on Mars as well right now. I'm telling you, I speak everywhere. I'm out everywhere. So I have I have no concept of like racism and like my little island that I rule the, the, the world with and I'm the center of the universe. I have no concept of that. You understand? I see the whole spectrum. And I go and visit every single person in the temple, friends. You ever go to Pokemon? You visit everybody in the Pokemon trainer gym. There's the water one. There's the cave one. And there's that girl with the, with the flying bat that puts you to sleep and stuff. You got to make sure that you have a sleep-resistant Pokemon. You see all these, friends. You go around the world touring. Yes, that's what I basically I've, I do this. Just digitally, I do this. And I'm like, wow, I've noticed something, guys. You all think that you're all got the right answer. Every single one of you. All of you are convicted. All of you guys have a, an ability to defend the temple to the very end. Or every single person, go there, man. Don't, don't go. No, don't, don't waste your time. I've done that. Okay, Corey Danzo, XRP, Stella, the vegan poop version of XRP. Trust me, friends. Every coin, there are people who defend the temple, and that's when I realized, oh, they all think they're right. They all think they're right. Guess what? Out of everyone's chairs who I sniffed, yeah, out of a hundred. Three are going to be right, really right. Ten are going to think they're right, but actually they're just getting like a residual pump and then 90% are going to be wrong. So I'm like, guess what? I went to everyone. I know I'm not right with every single person. Just every single person believes they're right. Once you see what I see, when I, that's why, friends, I make my channel here for you. I'm not charging you anything for it. No, it's free content. I'm telling you, oh my gosh, everyone thinks I have the answer. Therefore, no one has the answer. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's pretty much it, friends. It's, you have to listen to the market. What's the market saying? And by the way, everybody like digs their heels into the floor. Like, no, this is it. That's why I told you, man, you play each cycle. Buying the depression, selling the euphoria. That's it. Is that euphoria? Weak hands yet? No, there's not. Okay. So that's what I'll tell you. Now, when it comes to this, friends, if you got to think about hex as well, right? If the value proposition of hex staking, it's so low, right? That you need to compensate them for it. That's not me talking. The marketplace is saying, hey, we don't want to buy Hex. We don't want to buy it. Okay, this is the P-Hex chart. So, you know what I mean? Hex, basically, if Richard says, hey, old E-Hex, you no longer exist. Okay, now you're the one that's down 98%. You're back down to one cent. Okay, very, very low. Price gets rejected whenever Richard Hart buys. Okay, so you see this. So that's why I'm thinking, wow, how much product market fit do you have if people have to let you be given money to use it? Not much. Not much. Not me talking. But here's the thing, man. Look, here's the thing. It's possible that when Ethereum breaks $5,000, we unlock a leverage frenzy on the market, and then this goes up. Anyway, that's what we're playing for. You're literally playing for that. However, a lot of you are saying, well, do I need to be 100% all in on this one ID? And the answer is no, you don't. That's why I have 90% caught 10% lottery. You're playing your new meme coins, new altcoins. A lot of your friends, baby, else, congratulations to all of you messaging me in the Telegram. You guys are finding these other AI coins, making 10X and 5X here, playing around Solana. Keep playing around. You just know that. That's why I told you 9% call 10% lottery, not the other way around. Because you know you're playing with fire. There's a lot of honeypots and scams and stuff here and there, and you're building conviction and stuff. So that's why, friends, I let people talk about all this other stuff all the time. Now, remember back in the day, man, back in the day, Hex was cycle number one narrative. It was. Just the the, this, the problem is, not the problem, let's the reality of the situation, friends, is for someone like Richard and Du Quan, okay, and SBF, they have a vision. They're visionaries. You know, they see a future. So it's, they never quit on the vision. You notice that? So they have a future. It's either going to play it or it's not. So it's going halfway. It could stop. It could change. Are they going to change with it? That's why, friends, you and me, it's easy to change. It's easy to change. I'm not saying sell everything I'm doing. I'm just telling you, yeah, we can sell in the euphoria. What I'm basically telling you, yeah, there's a price too low, there's a price too high. Of course, I think prices are too low now, now but I'm telling you, yeah, there's a price too high and it doesn't have to be 4,000 X higher from here to be too high. The market is telling you things. That's why it's not me talking, man. That's why a lot of people get offended. I don't, I don't care if it's, you've kind of figured it out right now. The last thing I care about 
are people's feelings. Literally, the last thing on earth. Okay, bro, where were you when I was huddled up in a fetal position, getting kicked in the nuts in all three of my Sultana balls in the bear markets, learning all of these? Where were you? You weren't putting food on my table. You weren't getting me up off the ground. You were nowhere. Where were you helping me figure out what to do next and help everyone? Where were you? Okay, you were nowhere. Okay, sweet. Therefore, you're nobody. Pretty much a nobody. See what I mean? Okay, where were you with the gun to my head telling me, hey, Phantom's up 112x. You should probably get out now, right? I had to do that for everyone. Where were you? Friends, I was calling top signals and stuff for coins I didn't even own. I'm like, hey, man, just be careful. You know, some people did exit. I don't know. 9% of people did it. Okay, so you... I know, friends, on one hand, everyone's in the community. On the other hand, you got to remember, oh, wait a minute. As soon as the bear market comes, you guys are going to put a knife to my throat and you're going to exit dump first and you're going to run out. You see that? But we just went through that bad part. Now we're in the good part. But just remember, the good part doesn't last forever. So, yeah, man, back then, staking had a lot of product market fit. You didn't need to do anything except to tell people about, hey, you can stake, it's DeFi, it's native, trustless yield. They go, wow, DeFi. See the narrative? It's not cycle one new narrative anymore. The people who come in for new stuff, they're in AI stuff. AI stuff that, you know, Eric Walls just made like a write-up on BitTensor. I knew this was coming. I knew, I was like, I bet Eric, I have friends, I told you, you knew you been watching, right? Eric's going to make an article about how AI on crypto is trash, and then I said, it's going to keep going up even more. They're going to call him stupid and he's going to keep writing about it and everyone's going to like basically fade him forever and ever and ever and they're going to regret it in the next bear market. It's exactly what happened with Hex, by the way. He said, oh, your stake and useless thing is trash at one cent. But guess what? It doesn't really matter, is it? Because it went, went like 50x higher. Actually, went like a thousand x higher from me. He just said it was trash from the start. So it is what it is, man. It is what it is, friends. So the market landscape has clearly changed. Okay, you've seen this. People want AI, new meme coins, Desi, DP, and restaking. There's also gaming. People want new gaming. If you're in VVV Launchpad or Paid Launchpad, you can do that. Okay, friends? So that's what I'm doing, man. Just, hey, you filter out. You try to play as best as you can. Try to get new coins. Don't pay expensive prices. It is what it is, okay? You don't need to pay people to buy any of those coins. Have you noticed that? You don't need to pay people to buy AI coins. You don't need to pay people to buy new meme coins. You don't need to, even, you don't need to give them reflection tokens or staking. You don't need to do anything. Hey, there's a dick with a butt. That's it. I like it. It's funny. It's universal. It's been here forever. Okay, cool. I can believe in that. Makes me laugh. Makes me, gives me better emotions in the traditional financial system. That's it. That's it. See what I mean? Now, how's Dick with a butt going to be in the year 2035? I don't know. I don't know. But you're going to tell you the same thing. What? How's Hex going to be in 2035? How's Bitcoin and Ethereum going to be? Okay. If we try to think out too long like that, it's great. The problem is you end up just bag holding at the tops when there are signs that your thing is, is too expensive. Okay. So... On a positive note, though, friends, I mean, everything to tell you, it's not even positive. Like, it's just, it's, I know, I know, I'm not, I'm not stupid. I know, hey, yeah, people are going to get upset at this, but I don't care, man. I don't care. If you can't swallow this, whose fault's that? It's not my fault. Like, okay. You know what I mean? Some people adapt. We're doing fine. I like the PulseX chart, though. Why? See, here's the thing, man. You don't need to pay people to buy PulseX. You don't need to. Richard is choosing to do it. You don't actually need to do it. You know, the best part about Pulse X is it's got the best use case in everything. All right. People gambling in the casino, there's a hyper burn. Even Mr. Coexistence Steven didn't know. I've, so I've got to refresh everyone's memory. Remember, friends, there's V1 and there's V2 of Pulse X. V1 has a bug, okay, where it burns like four times, 400% more buy and burn than it should. It's so powerful. Then they have to do V2. But the V1, you don't get any fees if you provide liquidity. They only come in V2. So V1 stays there, but you get incentive token with the hyper buy and burn. But guess what? All that liquidity providing here and there, people who are in PulseX, right? If they're just playing around on Pulse Chain, they're swapping between different coins and stuff. The buy and burn is automatically buying PulseX every single day. That's the best part about it. You don't need to pay people to do it. They're doing it naturally. Okay, you can even go here and check the check it down here. It's up to 3.79% down there in the bottom, bottom left. 3.79% of the total supply bought and burned. Okay, so there you go. That's pretty nice to think about. So that's why I've just juxtaposed this. So put these as a contrast. You see, with Hex was cycle one narrative. Yes, it was the greatest performing asset, friends. Of course, I'm not going to take, take anything away from that. However, it's not 2020 anymore. Okay, it's not 2020. DeFi is not new anymore. The pro I thought, yeah, DeFi is cool. It's going to keep living on. Yes, it will live on 
But how much living are you doing when new meme coins, dog with a hat, peppy, new AI coins, you have new gaming, decentralized penises, decentralized sciences, and restaking all those new lay one, all those new narrative ones. Like, you know, it's a game of adoption, right? And attention. That's pretty much what it comes down to. You know, it is. Okay. So otherwise, like, what's the example? Hey, XRP communities around here, but look at the chart. So yes, in a nutshell, XRP did well for Ripple. They get to dump the inflation. They get to dump the inflation every year. Of course, it did well for them. Look, with Hex, it's good. You get to be the Ripple. But I'm not going to hear shut my mouth and pretend like, yeah, I know what's coming next. I don't know what's coming next. I hope Richard deploys all the money and everything goes, uh, everything pumps up, okay? So I'm just here to give you these insights. That's why I just gave you this juxtaposition. So just learn this in many investments. I know it's a common trap to think about. They go, well, if we lower this cost, people should buy it more. Theoretically, they do, yeah. But in crypto, lowering a cost isn't really enough to make people buy things more because there's so much competition of stuff out there. It isn't sustainable as a strategy. You need to do more, okay? That, that's pretty much it is what it is, okay? Lowering the cost. Also, also raising the cost doesn't do anything either. That's what Zen tried to do. Hey, if we raise the cost of staking and stuff over time to get the Zen inflation, the thing of the thing should go up. Not really, okay? So you have to see this. And like the biggest reality, I mean, you already know this. Pulse chain has been out for a year, okay? Staking hex is near zero now. It doesn't cost anymore. What's that done for the price? All right, it launched at five and a half cents, okay? Now it's down one cent. Okay, so you're down more than 80%. See? What are you going to say, friends? What happened in the past year? Bitcoin went up, broke the highs. Ethereum is up, hit $3,800. You see what I mean? Like so much strength. Bitcoin ETF. It's, what, what happened? What happened? It's the marketplace has entered new people. You understand? So they, they've opened up the gate. This is actually what happened, okay? They opened up the gates. Then new people entered. Now, everybody believed that their narrative, aha, I'm the genius. My narrative is going to be the one that wins. I'm going to be early in the bull market. We are not correlated at all, blah, blah, blah. I said it's fake, 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 and wrong, wrong, wrong. The market said, see it on over there, I'll spank you again. Okay, so these new people entered. Millions and millions of people entered. And they chose. Free market. What did they choose? AI. New gaming. De De Desi. Decentralized penises. Restaking. That's what the market chose. You understand? The market's chosen them. It's chosen Peppy. It's chosen Dog with a Hat. It's chosen Soilana. Okay? So far. Maybe not going forever. But you got to see, that's what it's chosen so far. And the DeFi stuff that everyone believes in, yes, you believe in it. But I'm telling you, yes, you can believe in something all you want for as long as you want. I'm just telling you, millions and millions and millions of people are entering. And the rate at which they're choosing these other narratives is exceptionally high compared to the ratio if you do that versus what they're choosing for the old narratives. That's it. On average. Now, don't go phone by all the new stuff, but you got to see, friends. Paying people to use your stuff from the old cycle, like, let's be honest. If if this was, friends, if this was a product for a customer, let's say, I don't know, you're a freaking chair maker. You built this chair, okay? Now, and let's say the customer doesn't like it. They go, you know what? There's not enough squeaks in it. There's not enough squeaks in this chair. Okay. Well, you got two options now. You can pay people to sit on your chair and try your chair, pay them to try the chair, okay? Or you can build a proper squeaky chair that squeaks, that squeaks and squeaks, friends. If you build the squeaky chair, it will sell itself. There's a predicament though, okay? How's Richard gonna delete hex and then build an AI hex to do that? I don't know. That's why I'm just telling you, the market's choosing Pulse and PulseX more because they're new. You're getting the residual new buyers versus hex as a ratio, as a ratio. Now, what does that mean for USD prices? I don't know, friends. I guess we'll see how it plays out. You've learned too much today. Like, like subscribe, baby, and I'll catch you soon.